Hello, Kelly. How are you doing? You are getting very close. I've got some comments here, and, and I, I want you to, to think about branding as opposed to design and the, difference, the differences between branding and design. Branding, especially for a student who's getting ready to introduce themselves to the hiring market uh, in the, the design field, um, branding should all, be all about consistency. One of the reasons why it's about consistency and why our consistency has got to be almost dogmatic is because that's what employers are going to be looking for. They're going to be looking at your branding package and they're going to be saying to themselves and asking themselves some questions. Does this designer understand branding? Is there consistency in the branding to the point where it's proven to me that this, understand, this designer understands basic branding? I wanted to set that up because there's some inconsistencies in your design suite, in your branding suite, I think that really need to be mentioned. Let's take a look at your business card. Okay, you got your, your lovely logo. Okay, then you've got over here, you've got this big purple block, and then you've got your white type um, on the purple, reversed type on the purple background. Okay, then you've got a frame around the whole thing. So if we look at the back, I mean, if we look at the letterhead, we see something completely different. That's your logo, right? That's what you've been working on. That's your logo. So basically what you're showing the potential employer here is that you've broken your branding on your, your, your branding suite. And let me explain that. You've got a business card, here's your logo. You've got the mark, and then you've got your, your text completely separate. But here you're saying your logo is the mark with your type next to it with the purple graphic designer and the black Kelly Danner. So my suggestion is use that mark, okay? Personally, I, I think I've said this before, but I think the mark itself is too large in relationship to the size of the type. I would reduce that a little bit, that relationship. That mark is a little bit too big. We can clearly see as the mark is really still fully visible while everything else is kind of lost. So that's one indication that um, there's not even in dis distribution in your, your, uh, the scale of your elements. Again, highly recommend that you use this logo right here on the front of your business card, just like that. Okay, if you want to, to use the front of your business card to, to include your contact information, try to figure out how to assemble it as such. Otherwise, it's a great idea to use the back of your business card for your contact information. That way, you don't have to obstruct your, your logo at all. Okay, hope that makes sense. It's a pretty critical point. As far as the business card itself, there's a couple of things here that I think are really super trendy that are working against you. And that's this. this. And if you take a look, just look at our class our, alone, and you'll see probably 70% of our classmates are doing the same thing, using little icons and why? Because it's super trendy right now. I want to be the designer that doesn't do what everyone else is doing. And I think that's a really interesting way to look at design. Don't be predictable. Try to do things that everyone else isn't doing. Try to do things that are unique to Kelly. Okay, so that's why I think these are a little bit overused, maybe a little monotonous, maybe a little bit too trendy for a branding suite. Another thing is that you've got a lot of visual stops on this card. Okay, so for instance, you've got this box here, then you've got this box here, then you've got this whole thing framed, and then believe it or not, you've got four rectangles that are created by the frame. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. You may not look at them as shapes, you may not look at them as design elements, but the subconscious certainly does. So right now, your front of your business card has at least six visual stops, whereas a logo like this, if this were your business card, okay, that would have one visual stop. And that's because this is grouped beautifully. Okay, food for thought. All right, let me know if you have any questions about that. Let's go ahead to the, move, the leave behind. Oh, you know, let's talk about the letterhead. Uh, letterhead's great. I love it. I, I, I love this minimal use of letterhead and branding, and I think employers will appreciate it because they will. it shows that you understand the versatility of a letterhead. So you're not trying to jam things all left. You're not trying to jam things all right. You're really evenly distributing things, opening up a beautiful area for which to use um, as your working area in your letterhead, whether that be, you know, you could eventually use this for letterheads or shipping invoices or whatever for your, for your design company. I think that this, these dots right here are really big and they're super distracting. I think they're kind of like almost taking the show away from the type here. 
My suggestion here would be either to really reduce those or we could even reinforce this, vert this uh, vertical line right here just by making a vertical separation between those instead of the dot. And I think that might be an interesting way to go is to create that repetition between that vertical line and, the, and those because otherwise we're not seeing dots anywhere else on the page. So uh, other thing is that this, this uh, purple rule at the bottom of the page, I think it's, it's pretty heavy. It's drawing way too much attention to the bottom of the page. It's basically, it's, it's imbalanced to the bottom of the page, bottom heavy, as it were. I think a really good idea for that is, is to just present your type in purple. What the heck? Did not mean to do that, but let's go back to where I was. Okay, as I was, oh, I went to your Behance site. Oh, that's what I did. How about that? Oh yeah, <laughs> and I clicked on your thing and we went through your site. So, okay, so anyways, um, a, a, a really good way to remedy that would be to just present your type in purple. Okay, and then also I just want to command R this, bring a guide out here and I want to just draw that guide and I want to drop it right there. That's where your type should start, right there. And then take that and, and uh, duplicate it over there so your margins are equal and then span your type as such. Right now you're too close to your margins. Okay, leave behind peace. Um, not sure, how, oh, I did want to talk about this, Kelly. Listen, this is, a, I don't think it's going to work. And let me explain why. Okay, you stated that you were going to use a mini portfolio. And a mini portfolios are a good idea. And then you, get, you shot me an email and said that you're changing your concept to this, um, I think it's a, a, tr a holder for a business card. And, and I don't think it's going to work. Let me explain why. There's that, oh, you know what? I just saw something. Just saw another inconsistency. Let me do something here. Let's jump out of it. Get that out of there. Okay, let's take, oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, take a look at the distance. Look at this relationship between this negative space right here. Then look at your leave behind. Graphic designer is jammed right up next to the KD. So that's an inconsistency. Again, broken branding right there. Really, really watch that. See what I'm saying? See how graphic designer is right up there against the D and then in your business card. I mean, I'm sorry, your letterhead, it's not. It's, it's, it's more evenly distributed in your... I'd go ahead and just straight up right align that. That's what I would do. Um, right now, it's just kind of in no man's land. It just doesn't... It doesn't know whether it wants to be centered or right aligned. So I would just straight up right align it Call it a day on that. Pay it back to the leave behind. Okay, so that's that inconsistency. Then here, there's your business card. But the thing that doesn't make sense is using this as a business card holder is this. This is a leave behind, meaning that you leave it with the person who interviews you. So that being the case, the person who interviews you will have already had in their hands your business card, your letterhead, and uh, just noticed another inconsistency business card. Take a look at the frame. Look how close the frame is to the side of the business card there. And then look at here. The distance is, is much, much greater. I'm not real sure if that's, if I'm reading this right or if I'm, maybe I'm confused, but let me know on that. But anyways, so the reason why I re recommend not using a business card holder is that, um, as I said, by the time you, you, you get through the interview process, you sent your, your cover letter, you've um, they've looked at your resume, they've called you in for an interview, you've interviewed, you show them your portfolio, they've got your branding suite, they've got your card in case they need to get a hold of you. And then you're going to turn around and you're going to say, okay, and my leave behind is a business card, but why am I leaving you a business card if you already have one? Do you see what I'm saying? That's why I, I, I just don't, I think it's redundant. I really do. I think you're, it's a missed opportunity to really design something that, that could work well. I know we're running out of time, so I don't want to discourage you here, but I think that something, I think you should rethink your, your leave behind. Okay, uh, wow, did not mean to take over nine minutes on this. I'm so sorry about that. I get carried away, man. I start talking and I don't know when to stop. So anyway, sorry about that. But anyways, so those would be my comments and concerns and my recommendations. So if you have any questions moving forward, please feel free to let me know and I'll see if I can clarify or help you out a little further. All right, great job. Thanks, Kelly.